thank you for joining us for the 36th Annual Arts and Business Council Awards. Today, we honor 10 individuals whose lifelong dedication to the arts has had a tremendous impact on Philadelphia. Through their work, these awardees have shown how a piece of music or theater or film or visual art enhances our understanding of the world and of ourselves. But not only that, many of them have shown how the act of art making uplifts diverse voices, can be a tool for community building, and can help us process trauma and heal. After more than a year of a brutal pandemic, and at a time when the social and economic inequities of today are front and center, these awardees remind us how the arts could not be more relevant and essential to helping us rebuilding our communities more inclusively and equitably. In addition to learning about impressive art practices today, you will hear stories about leadership and about innovation. These are issues that matter deeply to the Arts and Business Council, where we seek to foster collaboration and exchange between the arts and business communities. Our advisory board specifically chose these awardees for their alignment with our core belief that the arts and business communities have so much to learn from one another and are stronger for their interconnection. Speaking of the business community, this program would not be possible without our steadfast sponsors whose support has been critical this past year. Thank you to our visionary sponsors, Comcast NBC Universal, Independence Blue Cross, and PNC Arts Alive. Thank you to leadership sponsor, Pico. Thank you to our co-sponsors, Cozen O'Connor, Meridian Bank, Penn State Brandywine, TD Bank, and your part-time controller. And finally, thank you to our supporting sponsor, HOK. As you will see, these supporters are presenters today and deeply involved in the arts community with many connections to our awardees. We have a great program for you today. To kick things off on an upbeat note, we will hear a new piece of music written especially for one of our awardees, Jay Wall. While working at the Kimmel Center, Jay created La Noche, a free monthly music event incorporating Latin dance, song, and storytelling that brought new diverse audiences to the Kimmel Center. You can learn more about this piece, our awardees and our sponsors in our digital program book. Please also share a round of applause or engage your fellow members of the audience in the chat box. Enjoy the show.
The Arts and Business Council is proud to present an Arts and Business Leadership Award to Abigail Adams. Abigail has been associated with People's Light for more than 40 years, serving as artistic leader for over two decades and chief executive for the past 10 years. She has combined artistic excellence, a commitment to community, and a gift for strategic planning in her decades of leadership. In addition to directing more than 60 plays at People's Light, she has established new programs, such as the New Voices program, which serves young people from the city of Chester with an intensive slate of theater class scholarships and mentorship, and Community Matters, a series of community dialogues sparked by play readings. Next year, Abigail will step down as Executive Artistic Director of People's Light and transition into her new role as Director of Special Projects. Through her stewardship and artistic vision, she helped People's Light transition from a regional theater to become a true cultural and civic center. Congratulations, Abigail. TD Bank is a proud sponsor of the Arts and Business Council and this awards program. The TD Charitable Foundation carries a legacy of supporting nonprofit institutions and their important work throughout the Philadelphia region. It's my privilege to virtually present an Arts and Business Leadership Award to Abigail Adams. With her disciplined approach to long-term strategic thinking, People's Light has flourished under her leadership as Chief Executive over the past 10 years, and her dedication to the organization for more than 40 years has influenced an unfathomable number of patrons, partners, and artists. With Abby transitioning from Executive Artistic Director to the organization's Director of Special Projects in 2022, the securement of this next phase for People's Light is the direct result of our foresight and comprehensive secession planning. Congratulations, Abby, and thank you for all the work that you do. Thank you for this recognition. We are honored to be among such a smart, imaginative, and caring group of leaders and organizations. I say we because I accept this award on behalf of People's Light, where I have been lucky enough to spend most of my career working with and among many leaders. During our 46 year history, we have produced some excellent theater on our stages, in classrooms, and in various communities, but we've also made many mistakes and at times failed miserably. From our successes and especially our failures, we continue to learn to change, to build a culture of inclusion that celebrates our shared humanity. And we do that best through our art making. The spirit of these awards recognizes the importance art plays, not just in our economy, but in the mending of our hearts and the nourishing of our souls. We thank you for that. The Arts and Business Council is proud to present an Arts and Business Leadership Award to Alan Edmonds. Alan is the founder of Brandy Wine Workshop and Archives, a nonprofit organization that for nearly 50 years has fostered diverse artists both within a studio setting and in Philadelphia's neighborhoods and shared the works of its artists in residence with an international audience through traveling shows. The Brandy Wine Workshop's early years focused on facilitating hands-on work with Philadelphia teenagers and young artists who produced the limited edition screen-printed fine art. Throughout the 1970s and 80s, Brandywine partnered with many public, civic, and private sector organizations, from Pennsylvania Horticultural Society to Philadelphia's Department of Licenses and Inspections, to bring art into neighborhoods across the city. More recently, Brandywine has established its campus in a restored firehouse on Avenue of the Arts as a cultural resource training hundreds of high school students there in graphics, videography, collection documentation framing, and exhibition planning through after-school and summer workshops. Congratulations, Alan. Penn State Brandywine is honored to support Philadelphia's creative and innovative community. To serve makers of all ages, I'm excited to announce the opening of our Creative Economy Makerspace this summer in the borough of Lansdowne in Delaware County. We'll kick off our Makerspace programming in June with our virtual STEAM youth programming series. But today, I'm here to salute another Brandywine, the incredible success of Alan Edmonds, who has transformed our community through the Brandywine Workshop and Archives. This cultural institution where creative expression, collaboration, and emerging technologies blend under Alan's direction and leadership, continues to impact artists and diverse audiences of all backgrounds. 
So for his 40 years of fervent dedication to the local art scene, I am pleased on behalf of Penn State Brandywine to present the Arts and Business Leadership Award to Alan Edmonds. Congratulations, Alan. I'm very happy to receive the Leadership Award from the Arts and Business Council. Um, in fact, I have a history with the Arts and Business Council. Uh, I go back to the first uh, iteration, which was the Business Volunteers for the Arts. And the leader at the time was Bonnie Freudlich. She was the founding director. Um, and then she was succeeded by Karen Davis, um, longtime director of the Arts and Business Council. Uh, both were super uh, dynamic. Um, they were leaders for their time. And uh, so it's, it's a special honor to receive this from an organization from which I knew uh, at its very emergence on the scene in Philadelphia. Um, and accepting this award, uh, the only thing I really have to say is that I go back to something that's been my motto forever, and that is no one person gets to accomplish anything or achieve anything of value or anything that's meaningful. And so I want to pay tribute through this award, pay tribute to the many board members and staff that have supported the mission of Brandywine and given me the opportunity to lead it for almost five decades now. Uh, so, you know, in tribute to them and uh, in gratitude to the Arts and Business Council of Philadelphia, uh, I thank you for this, uh, this great honor. The Arts and Business Council is proud to present an Arts and Business Leadership Award to Ruth Naomi Floyd. Ruth is a pioneering and multifaceted artist, known for her work as a vocalist, composer, educator, activist, photographer, and champion for people affected by HIV and AIDS. As the creator of Frederick Douglass Jazz Works, Ruth presents original jazz compositions paired with Douglass's writings. These jazz works teach diverse audiences about America's painful history of slavery and racism, exploring the tragedy and injustice of American slavery, but also reaffirming the importance of hope, perseverance, and joy. In addition to her role as director of jazz studies at Cairn University, Ruth has also been an HIV AIDS activist for many years. Her photography series, Reflection, Woman in the Veil, encourages viewers to empathize with women of color and their struggles and achievements as they battle HIV AIDS. In her many roles as an artist and educator, she brings new perspectives on race with messages of challenge and triumph. Congratulations, Ruth. Your part-time controller, YPTC, primarily supports the nonprofit sector. We are the nonprofit accounting experts, and we are proud to support the Art and Business Council. Our dedication to create a community, especially this year, has been to reinforce that building of better accounting departments can ensure survival in the current climate. On behalf of YPTC, I'm honored to present the Art and Business Leadership Council Award to Ruth Naomi Floyd, who has been at the forefront of creating sacred jazz vocal settings for over 20 years. Ruth has been a dominant force in areas of arts and justice throughout her career, and her jazz composition, Frederick Douglass Jazz Works, exploring the abolitionist fiery anti-slavery speeches and writings delivered an important tide of action and spark in our community. We are in awe of your powerful work, Ruth, and congratulate you on this wonderful honor. Thank you, Jim, for your kind introduction. Art matters in a beautiful world and broken world. Art shapes and reshapes us. We must create and we must tell the truth in the midst of the creative process, for creating is an act of resistance to all that is false. The theme of justice is infused in my everyday life. My music, photography, education, and justice work inform and fuel each other. In my latest creative work, the Frederick Douglass Jazz Works, Frederick Douglass's own words inspire and challenges us. If you have whispered truth, whisper no longer. Speak as the tempest does, stronger and stronger. Let your words be heard through the press, through the pulpit, in all directions. I humbly add to his words, let truth speak stronger and stronger in our creative practices. Thank you, Art and Business Council, for the high honor of receiving this award and all the profound work 
you do for all of us. The Arts and Business Council is proud to present an Arts and Business Leadership Award to Kathleen Green. Over the course of her career at institutions including Mural Arts and Fleischer Art Memorial, Kathleen has created meaningful art programs with a commitment to celebrating diversity and inclusion. Now, as the curator and manager of public programs for the Barnes Foundation, she has developed inclusive programming that exposes new audiences to the Barnes Foundation and builds partnerships across Philadelphia's art community. At the Barnes, she has launched several programs, including Artist Bash, a performance-based series celebrating the creative traditions within the African and Asian diaspora. Facing Change, a multicultural and intergenerational conversation on race in America, and Roll Call, an Instagram Live program that reaches hundreds of viewers. Kathleen has been determined to make the Barnes accessible to a wide and diverse audience, much as the museum's founder, Dr. Barnes, had originally envisioned. Congratulations, Kathleen. On behalf of PICO, I'm extremely honored to present the Arts and Business Leadership Award to Kathleen Green, Curator of Public Programs at the Barnes Foundation. Keeping the arts accessible and cultivating a passion for creative expression is key to PICO's corporate mission, and it's how we power communities across this region. Because of that, we are proud to sponsor today's awards program and honored to recognize Kathleen's work in making sure that everyone is able to access the world-renowned Barnes Collection. Under Kathleen's guidance, what started as a concept for free access to the collection on Sundays has blossomed into a full day of free family programming, complete with crafts, workshops on social change, films, dance performances, and so much more. Every month, Kathleen curates a day that centers the voices and the talents of diverse individuals and organizations from across the region, and she opens the Barnes Foundation doors to everyone. At a time when the discussion about race and equity has been amplified across the world, Kathleen's work is more relevant than ever. Her commitment to inclusion is an example that all organizations and corporations should pay attention to. Congratulations, Kathleen, and thank you for your partnership. I'm incredibly honored to be awarded alongside the individuals being celebrated, many of whom are friends, mentors, and colleagues. My work spotlights the beauty of our communities by asking creatives to dream big and then collaborate with me to scale the programs into something different than imagined and richer than thought possible. My success, if I have any, is a reflection of the artists, cultural creators, and producers who trust me enough to share their dreams and question my process. It's also a reflection of the colleagues whose expertise help to support, fund, and promote these programs. I would not have any impact without my family's continuous love and support. Shout out to the Greens, Greaves, Ogilvies, Pivens, and Parkers. Please pay creatives for their time, prioritize them, and uplift their voices. Their music, poetry, dance, installations, and books will help us to better understand the world around us. We all have much work to do. Let's get to it. The Arts and Business Council is proud to present an Arts and Business Leadership Award to Aviva Kapist. Aviva is a designer, educator, and advocate for equitable revitalization in underserved urban communities. As Executive Director of the Village of Arts and Humanities, located in North Philadelphia since 2013, Aviva co-creates programs in collaboration with community members, stakeholders, and other experts for racial, social, and cultural equity. Aviva has spearheaded numerous projects to support local artists, including the COVID-19 Emergency Gap Fund for Philadelphia's Black Working Artists and the creation of Village Tileworks, a center for education, job skills training, and production of ceramic tiles in the Fairhill Hart Tranft neighborhood. She has also led designed equitable developments in the community, including a $1.5 million project to revitalize the village's creative expression and learning facilities, the renovation and conversion of village properties to community residences that will be part of a shared equity home ownership program for extremely low income residents, and a program to increase literacy outcomes for multi-generational residents through environmental design and playful learning. Congratulations, Aviva. Good morning. Since Meridian Bank's inception in 2004, we have contributed more than $3 million to charitable and civic organizations in the Delaware Valley, and we pride ourselves on building lasting, meaningful relationships with organizations and businesses in our community. We are pleased to continue our enthusiastic support of Greater Philadelphia's arts community with this sponsorship 
and to be able to introduce the next esteemed honoree. The Village of Arts and Humanities has brought unparalleled access to the arts to our urban communities, and its success could not have been imagined without Aviva Kapist. She envisioned and executed the village's transition to a neighborhood community development corporation by bringing diverse sectors and partners together, securing funding to revitalize the adjacent Germantown and Lehigh Avenue's business corridor, and empowering neighborhood residents to drive and steward positive social change. Congratulations, Aviva, and thank you for your commitment to our Philadelphia artists and communities. Thank you so much, and thank you to the Arts and Business Council. This award comes at an amazing time at the Village. After almost a year, we are launched, we've launched our Staying Power exhibition. The Village is a true beacon of staying power in a city that has very limited investment in arts, in community development, and in justice, particularly in neighborhoods that have seen over a century of disinvestment. I really want to thank my board of directors, my tireless and genius team at the village, and all of the community leaders and participants that our work is with and for, as well as our funders and our investors who really are willing to use their power to support the power of others to be built and nurtured. And I hope that right now, everybody, first of all, comes and visits our exhibition and also begins to really think about and consider their own staying power and how their staying power either works for or against others. Thank you so much again. The Arts and Business Council is proud to present an Arts and Business Leadership Award to Marangeli Mejia Rabel. Maggie is a Puerto Rico-born, Philadelphia-based cultural organizer, producer, and curator through her work with nonprofits in the region, such as the Painted Bride Art Center and Asociación Puerto Ricanos and Marcha. Maggie has infused the arts as a core component of workforce development, youth development, health education, ESL instruction, community planning, organizing, and other areas of programming in order to create and hold space for marginalized voices, communicate across cultures, build connections to opportunities, and lead groups to shared action. As director of the Philadelphia Latino Film Festival for more than five years, Maggie has led the festival to bring the best of U.S.-based Latinx and Latin American stories to an international audience. As co-founder and creative partner of Afro Taino, she has delivered the sights and sounds of the Afro, Latinx, indigenous diaspora to new audiences through a summer festival and programs like Gusto, a showcase of the diversity of Latinx gastronomy in Philadelphia. Congratulations, Maggie. PNC Arts Alive has always believed that engagement in the arts enriches lives and builds stronger, more vibrant communities. Since its debut in 2009, we have awarded more than $13 million in grants to innovative arts organizations led by incredibly creative leaders. It is a true honor for me to present the Arts and Business Council Leadership Award to one of our own grantees, Marangeli Mejia Rebel of Philadelphia Latino Film Festival. Maggie's commitment to infusing the arts as a core component of workforce development, youth development, health education, and more is an inspiring example of how to make a serious impact through shared action in our community. For your dedication to constant innovation, exposing countless new audiences to a diversity of artistic excellence, and much more, we are thrilled to present you with this award. Congratulations, Maggie. Good morning. Thank you, Arts and Business Council, for this wonderful opportunity, this wonderful award. Congrats to all the other awardees. And thank you for honoring this practice that it's centered with art as a connector and art as a tool for social change. From having the opportunity to activate it with other creatives, to activate it in non-traditional places for art and culture, like classrooms, organizing projects, other things where they will be like arts and culture, why? Thank you, thank you. Thank you to all my co-conspirators, Rasan Lucas, Afrodaino, and our universe. FLAF, Cristal Sotomayor, Leisa Montañez, and the rest of the team, thank you. And thank you to everybody else who I have had the chance to work with in a different life, in a different project, in a different collaboration. And last but not least, my mother, my daughter Tamara, 
my family, both the Mejia Ravel and my extended family. You know who you are, my community and Puerto Rico. This is a love letter to you. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the celebration. The Arts and Business Council is proud to present an Arts and Business Leadership Award to Maida Malone. Maida is a dedicated lawyer who has served as senior counsel for companies such as DuPont Merck Pharmaceutical Company and most recently the nonprofit Pennsylvanians for Modern Courts. But she has also been working to stabilize nonprofit organizations for more than 40 years. She has served as board chair since 2008 after having served as the organization's CEO. During her tenure leading CFIVA, she promoted professional development and business marketing for artists, believing that these skills could give artists greater control over their careers and their subsequent success. With her leadership, CFIVA's long-standing public program, Philadelphia Open Studio Tours, post, expanded into what is now an integral part of the city's art calendar each year. She also brought CFIVA's custom exhibition programs into Philadelphia's corporate environments and established partnerships, including Morgan Lewis and Bacchius, the Chamber of Commerce for Greater Philadelphia, and the Sonesta Hotel in Center City, among others. Congratulations, Maida. Community service and leadership are among the core values of Cozen O'Connor. We value our support of the Arts and Business Council for our participation on its advisory board. We are dedicated to responding to the needs of the communities in which we live and practice, and the Arts Council plays a key role for us in meeting that objective. On behalf of Cozen O'Connor, I am honored to present an Arts and Business Leadership Award today to Maida Malone, of whom we are all adoring fans. Maida has passionately led major donor development initiatives, fundraising campaigns, volunteer-based programs, and community outreach initiatives. During her dedicated and transformative tenure at CFEVA, the pioneer in encouraging career development and business marketing to give artists control over their paths and their subsequent success. Her impact on the creative community of Philadelphia is truly remarkable. I am personally amazed at her dedication to causes that will serve all of us, and I had the pleasure of seeing firsthand the fruits of her labor when I served on the board of the Pennsylvanians for Modern Courts, which she so ably led. Thank you for all of your work, Maida, and congratulations. I'm truly honored and tickled pink to be receiving this leadership award from the Arts and Business Council. The Council and the Chamber of Commerce have been partners of SIVA since I joined the organization in the late 90s. So having these two organizations acknowledge SIVA and my roles there is particularly rewarding to me. SIVA is, to my mind, the original artist services organization in Philadelphia, uniquely devoted to providing financial, experiential, and relationship building support to artists at all phases of their careers, and at the same time, nurturing the community of art lovers and learners in the Philadelphia region so that they all live and work in mutual support of each other. Philadelphia Open Studio Tours is a perfect example of the work that SIVA does. Our online version of POST just concluded and our usual in-person tours, the best opportunity to see where artists produce their work in the city will recommence in October. While our city is home to important organizations that house the works of renowned artists long known to the public, being associated with this gem that attracts and retains living, working artists in our midst has been the great joy of my professional life. Thank you for acknowledging it and my work there. The Arts and Business Council is proud to present an Arts and Business Leadership Award to Jay Wall. For more than 11 years, Jay served as the Producing Artistic Director of the Kimmel Center for the Performing Arts, where he created and led multiple residency programs in jazz and theater that incubated local and national artists and resulted in several world premieres. Through monthly programs, Sitting In and La Noche, he engaged diverse audiences and introduced them to world-class emerging artists. He also served as the artistic director of the biennial Philadelphia International Festival of the Arts, which increased and broadened access to the arts by bringing performances directly to neighborhoods across the city, including a 500,000-person block party on South Broad Street. While Jay recently moved on to become the executive director of The Flynn in Burlington, Vermont, he also served on the Arts and Business Council's advisory board for many years. In that role, he was a passionate advocate for the unique ways that arts leaders and business leaders could learn from and contribute to one another. Congratulations, Jay. Hi, 
I have been a member of the Arts and Business Council Board for several years and have enjoyed serving with amazing leaders from around the region. And it is through my service that I got to meet my colleague and now friend, Jay Wall. Now, when I think of Jay Wall, I think of a creative bundle of energy with equal parts, uh, strategy and empathy and joy wrapped together and under a layer of innovative thinking. I mean, his work speaks for him. As artistic director of the PIFA, who actually got on the Ferris wheel in the middle of Broad Street? You know, from there to being the mastermind behind the Kimmel's ongoing um, free monthly programs, sitting in in La Noche, to his innovative jazz and theater residencies and so much more. Now, while Jay is no longer here in the city, we will continue to feel the impact of his work. And so on behalf of my board member colleagues at ABC, I am honored to present the Arts and Business Leadership Award to Jay Wall. Yay, Jay. <laughs> Hello, thank you. I'm so honored and amazed actually to be here. Thank you to the Arts and Business Council for this. Uh, I've been so appreciative of my time working with the organization. I really deeply believe in the programs, creative exchange, designing leadership, business on board, any way we can lift up artistic practices and creative people in the region and support everyone. It's so important. I wouldn't be here without the Kimmel Center, which is my home for 11 years. Uh, thank you to Ann Ewers, to Ed Cameron, to Amy Harding, Eileen Harris, Krista Bean, the team that made all the work that I was so honored to be part of uh, possible, uh, where we really brought art all across the city and to the great stages of the venues there. Um, big shout out to the artists. They're, they're the ones that make all the magic, really, and I've been honored to work with them. Uh, with particular, uh, I just can't not mention Jay Donald Dubson, who led the Great Soulful Christmas, an annual tradition of gospel at the Kittle Center, Arturo Stable that led the La Noche Band where we perform monthly, Anthony Tidd, the curator of Sitting In, Lavella Kalica at Warrior Writers, and Cantor David Tillman that put together Sing Hallelujah to bring the Jewish community together. All these communities I've learned so much from, the ability to tell their stories from our stages and across the city is so meaningful and so powerful that we really recognize everyone's value and we can do that through the arts. Thank you so much for that and for me to be here. And I couldn't be here without my husband, Justin Fox. So I love you and thank you. And I uh, hope to see you all soon on the streets of the city. As chair of the Arts and Business Council's 30 person advisory board, I want to congratulate all of today's awardees. In past years, when the awards were held in person, we gave out awards on stage. For this year's virtual celebration, we still wanted to celebrate our winners with a physical award. Through a connection to Alan Edmonds of the Brandywine Workshop, we commissioned the South Philadelphia-based artist, Alexis Natini, to create Fireworks, a series of monoprints combining geometric shapes and digitally generated patterns that will serve as this year's physical awards. Thank you, Alexis, for these beautiful prints. We hope that the awardees enjoy them. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our second performance of the program, Joylette Harris and Christopher Colucci performing I'm Still Here, written by Stephen Sondheim. Joylette and Christopher are performers who have worked with Abigail Adams of People's Light, where they performed this song. The song is a funny and sad tale of a performer's perseverance and endurance, themes that many of us can identify with after this year. Here's to the resilience and staying power of the arts in Philadelphia. Congratulations, Abby. Good times and bum times, I've seen them all. And my dear, I'm still here. Plush velvet sometimes, sometimes just pretzels and beer. But I'm here. Ten years of braces, voice and tag Touring in places off the map Giving auditions on Xanax lap Never fear, never fear My mother rolled up 
the contract So I'm here I've done commercials and club dates and talk shows Gee, that was fun and a half When you've done commercials, talk shows and club dates Anything else is a laugh Black saver one day, next day it goes into hock But I'm here, oh Top billing Monday, Tuesday you're touring in stock, but I'm here. First you're another true blue tramp, then somebody's mother, then you're camp. Then you career, from career to career to career, you know what I'm talking about. Am I here? <laughs> I've gotten through. Hey, lady, aren't you? Who's it? Gee, what a looker you were. Or oh, better yet, uh-huh. Sorry, I thought you were. Who's it? Whatever happened to her? Good times and bum times. I've seen them all. And my dear. Yes, honey, I'm still here. Oh, yes. <laughs> Smooth sailing sometimes, sometimes with a kick in the rear. But I'm here. I've run the gamut from A to Z. Three cheers and damn it, say la vie. I got through all of last year, 2020, and I'm here. Yes, I'm here. At least I was there And I'm here Oh yes Look who's here ah, I'm still here I see you I'm still here Hi, I'm pleased to join all of you in celebrating the Arts and Business Council. The Council always plays an important role in making Philadelphia the wonderful creative region that it is. Their work is going to be especially important as we bring our city and region back to life after a very difficult year. So Independence Blue Cross is proud to support you. It's an honor to present the G. Fred DeBono Jr. Individual Leadership Award. This award recognizes individuals in Greater Philadelphia who have distinguished themselves in the arts, culture, or creative sectors for their impact on the cultural landscape. Fred DeBono led our company for 15 years as president and CEO, and his memory inspires us at Independence. His legacy as a business and civic leader still resonates throughout the region. He was a lifelong supporter of the arts and education, so it's fitting that we recognize this year's deserving recipient in his name. I'm excited to present the 2021 G. Fred DeBona Jr. Individual Leadership Award to Sue Yun Lox. Ms. Lox is a devoted supporter of Philadelphia's treasured arts institutions. She has fostered the creative community of Philadelphia by promoting the work of contemporary artists in our city. Under her leadership, the Lox Gallery, a pillar of our community for more than 50 years, has grown as a vital venue for local and internationally recognized artists. She has served as an example for mentoring and creating opportunities for fellowships and initiatives, reaching students in the region's leading art schools and institutions. As a trustee of the Locks Foundation, Ms. Locks has assured opportunities to continue to nurture Philadelphia's homegrown artists. We are so lucky to have her as a role model in our community and to be able to honor her today. On behalf of Independence Blue Cross, congratulations, Sue Young Locks. 
The Arts and Business Council is proud to present the G. Fred de Bono Award for Individual Leadership to Su Yen Locks. As director of the Locks Gallery since 1989, Su Yen has demonstrated a long standing commitment to promoting contemporary Philadelphia artists such as Sarah McEnany and Virgil Marty, as well as presenting exhibitions of established, internationally known artists such as Louise Nevelson and Robert Rauschenberg. Su Yen is also the leading supporter of the Philadelphia arts community. She currently serves as a trustee of the Philadelphia Museum of Art, where she joined other generous donors to endow an associate curator of Korean art, the first such name position in American museums, and together with her husband Jean Locks, created an endowment for Far Eastern art. Over the years, she has supported institutions that further the growth of promising young people, such as the Curtis Institute of Music, where the Locks Foundation endowed a scholarship fund for musicians. As chairperson of the Board of Moore College of Art and Design, she established the Locks Career Center for Women in the Arts and helped guide the careers of students, alumni, and continuing education students. Su Yen's civic pride and cultural generosity have strengthened many of Philadelphia's art institutions, while the Locks Gallery has both championed Philadelphia artists and upheld a standard of excellence within the local art scene. Congratulations, Su Yen. Hello. And thank you to the Arts and Business Council for this award. It's an honor to be included among the group of fellow Philadelphians who are being acknowledged this year. I was surprised to receive this award, especially after such a long and arduous year for all of us. That said, it feels like the right moment for the city to bring together individuals and groups working in the arts and in culture as we begin to slowly move out of this pandemic, hopefully towards a brighter and better future for our city. Culture, blind, culture binds us all together. And as we all know, Philadelphia is home to many outstanding world-class institutions and organizations that continue to shape the fabric of the unique city, a city that is full of history and diversity and innovation in the arts and beyond. Over the years, I have gratefully served on the boards of numerous arts and educational institutions, including the University of Pennsylvania Fine Arts Department, Moore College of Art and Design, and University of the Arts, Curtis Institute of Music. From these positions, I have learned a great deal about how cities grow and change and about the very real impact that individuals have in shaping and the direction and infrastructure that makes cities work. For these experiences, I am deeply grateful and I continue to be inspired by the many great leaders and creative artists working across sectors of the city today. Philadelphia is my adopted city. I moved here 40 years ago. I couldn't have found a better place to put down roots and build a life. I began as an artist, trained in art school in Korea. And my first job in the US was an, as a professor of fine arts at Stockton University in New Jersey. I met my husband, Gene Locks, lifelong Philadelphian who was born and raised here. Together, we have raised four wonderful daughters in the city, and I'm proud to have been able to work and raise family in a place like this, a place that we, place that has provided us such a strong cultural back, backbone for all of us, something that might not have been possible in other places. It has been an incredible journey and the city has gone through many changes in the years I have lived here. I continue to be amazed by Philadelphia and all its potential. And I believe that culture and the arts will be the beacon that leads our city forward. Thank you. Comcast NBC Universal is privileged to once again sponsor the Arts and Business Council Awards, a relevant and inspiring event that honors the creative leadership in our community. We believe that the exchange between business and creative communities is crucial to the recharge and recovery of our greater Philadelphia economy and region. 
And we hope that by shining a light on the cultural accomplishments of our arts community, that we will inspire more businesses to support and encourage the advancement of the arts. With this, it is my pleasure on behalf of Comcast and BC Universal to present the Anne de Harncourt Award for Artistic Excellence to Robert A.M. Stern. This prestigious award is bestowed upon an artist who has achieved national or worldwide acclaim, embodies arts achievement and serves as an inspiration to the greater Philadelphia region, both as an artist and as a leader. Bob is one of the foremost architects whose influence can be seen around the world and can be seen in our own skyline, including the Comcast Center and the American Museum of the Revolution, as noted in the video. Personally, in a non-pandemic world, I've had the pleasure of enjoying the amazing views throughout the Comcast Center, from my office to the gorgeous cafeteria on the 43rd floor, though I'm sure my kids would say that they like the holiday light show the most on the massive LED screen in the Winter Garden. I know that so many Philadelphians see that as a tradition in our city, and I look forward to getting back there for the 2022 show. Thank you for sharing your artistry with our great city and congratulations, Bob. The Arts and Business Council is proud to present the And Arnicourt Award for Artistic Excellence to Robert A.M. Stern. Bob is one of the country's foremost architects whose work and writings have changed architecture as it is practiced and taught. As the founder of Robert A.M. Stern Architects, he has helmed one of the country's most influential architecture firms, and he still personally directs the design of each of the firm's projects. Fortunately for Philadelphia, several of his projects can be found here. In Center City, two residential towers and the Museum of the American Revolution stand out for their history-conscious elegance, while Comcast Center punctuates the city's skyline with its sleek, modern look. In addition, Robert A.M. Stern Architects completed a master plan that reimagined the Navy Yard, as well as two office buildings there, and buildings at the University of Pennsylvania, Drexel University, and Villanova University. While his impact on Philadelphia has been great, it is but a small portion of his prolific output. Bob has influenced generations of architects as Dean of the Yale School of Architecture for nearly 20 years, and as the author of several books, including Tradition and Invention in Architecture, Conversations and Essays, and Paradise Planned, The Garden Suburb, and The Modern City both of which touch on the tension between classical and modern styles. Bob is a true luminary who has left an indelible mark on Philadelphia and American architecture. Congratulations, Bob. I'm pleased to accept this award honoring Anne Donancourt, a wonderful steward of Philadelphia's artistic heritage. Although I am a New Yorker, I feel very much at home in Philadelphia. My great affection for this city began many years ago when family visits during high school uh, years introduced me to its rich architecture and regrettably to the destruction in those days of too many Victorian Gothic buildings to make way for the Independence Mall. I have been a student of Philadelphia's architecture ever since. And I'm pleased to note that Philadelphia has shown greater respect for its architectural heritage in recent decades. While in architecture school, I had the privilege of assisting the great architectural historian, Vincent Scully, in preparing his um, 1962 pioneering monograph on the architect Louis I. Kahn. Discussion with Kahn provoked my interest in the underappreciated career of George Howe, the early 20th century Philadelphia architect, who became the subject of a book I published in 1975. This, he, Howe's long and varied career was in many ways an inspiration for my own journey in architecture, a journey that has frequently brought me back to Philadelphia, where I have had a great, the great good fortune um, to add to the city's skyline with Comcast Center, to reimagine the Navy Yard as a mixed-use neighborhood, to contribute buildings to Drexel University and the University of Pennsylvania, to introduce a residential tower and our LDS meeting house just north of the Vine Street Expressway, and to design the Museum of the American Revolution down the street from Independence Hall. 
In each case, I have sought to draw sustenance from Philadelphia's traditions. In keeping with my sense of architecture as a narrative art that builds upon the past with language understood by the public at large. The notion that a solitary architect works alone by private strokes of genius is, in my view, a foolish one. In any case, it's not how I operate. And I accept this award on behalf of my professional partners and colleagues, many of whom have been working with me for decades. As well, our work should not be possible without our clients, who over the years have entrusted us and me with their dreams and ambitions for this great city. I thank the Arts and Business Council for this recognition and for giving me this opportunity to honor Anne Darlincourt and to um, help celebrate the great city of Philadelphia. Thank you. Thank you for that wonderful speech, Bob. Thank you again to all our awardees for your work in Philadelphia. Thank you to our sponsors for making this event possible. Thank you as well to All Ages Productions, which created all the awardee videos. And thank you to Streambyte, which is streaming this program. Thank you to all my colleagues at the Arts and Business Council and the Chamber of Commerce for Greater Philadelphia. Without you, this event would not have been possible. And finally, thank you to all of you for joining us in this wonderful celebration today. Have a great day.